What's cracking? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your boy, Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football, whether you're joining me from YouTube or the podcast. Got love for all y'all. So thank you for being here with me today. It is Friday. So as you know, we're hopping back into a mock draft. We're going to be doing a dynasty rookie mock draft. And uh, one of the reasons I want to do it is because I basically just wrapped up my first dynasty rookie mock draft of the summer. And before we get into the mock draft, I kind of want to show you how the draft board went for me and just explain some of my picks. So this is a, a draft we do on Flea Flicker. That's one of the uh, better websites for dynasty drafts, if any of you guys are curious. <sighs> but this is a league uh, that I adopted the team this summer. So this was not a team that I had put together previously. This was a dynasty league that had already been going on. Someone dropped out and someone on Twitter asked if uh, if I wanted to join the league. So I said, yeah, 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 of course I want to join the goddamn league. What does it look like over here? So I'll, uh, I'll show you my team real quick, first of all, to show you what I adopted. Now, before you guys are, are, you know, we get into the draft and you're like, why would he take him there? What's wrong with you? All that kind of shit. This is the league settings. It's a super flex league. So you have one quarterback starting, but you also have a flex spot next to it, which you have the ability to start a quarterback. So it's pretty much a two quarterback league because anytime you have the super flex option, you want to use a second quarterback. So team I adopted already had Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers, Marcus Mariota, Jared Goff, Brett Hundley as their quarterback. So I'm set up pretty nicely. This is a six point passing touchdown league as well as two quarterbacks. So they are extremely valuable in this kind of league. Um, so having Aaron Rodgers obviously is a huge luxury. This is also a full PPR league. Um, and, you know, when I was asked to join the league, I was kind of skeptical because I don't really want to get into a dynasty league with people that I don't really know. Um, one of the guys works for four for four, the fantasy football company. Um, so I was like, it might be cool to get into, uh, you know, a league with him, first of all, just for networking opportunities. Uh, but obviously, I wanted to see my team first to see what I'm rocking with before I was like, yeah, let me throw money into this. Let me make this a long term thing. Um, and he showed me the team. And I was like, obviously, you're going to have to take the rookies out. Sony Michelle um, and the other guys on here. And I'll get into that once I get to the draft later. But team I adopted Aaron Rodgers, Mariota, Jared Goff, but only a quarterback. Super excited about that because we have Rodgers, obviously, then Mariota and Goff are two very young quarterbacks that are on the rise, of course. Even if I don't like Jared Goff that much this year, um, there are definitely worse options in two quarterback dynasty leagues for sure. At running back. We have Leonard Fournette as my RB1. Absolutely love that. Just came into the year, uh, the league last year, of course. Uh, monster rookie season set up for a huge workload. Now, the rest of my running backs are kind of spotty, which is why I needed to go with Sony Michelle early. Um, Tariq Cohen, of course, is nice to have. Oh, I didn't realize that was a flex spot, too. So Tariq Cohen is, uh, is obviously really valuable in PPR league this year with the coaching changes. Um, so this team I adopted probably moved up a little bit as the offseason kind of progressed. In my opinion, uh, actually, maybe not, because if you look at the rest of my team, right, my wide receivers and my running backs all together, um, you know, I have a lot of like wide receiver threes that might have down years or might play well, you know. So I have like Devin Funches, who normally, you know, he's young. Um, he had a big year last year, but then they add Torrey Smith. They add DJ Moore through the draft. Um, Greg Olson's coming back healthy. So I don't expect a huge year out of him. Marcus Lee re-signed to a big contract, but they also have all those unknown Wide receivers, Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook, they bring in Moncrief. Like, who knows what's really going to happen there in Jacksonville. Sterling Shepard, the number two, or probably number three now behind Ingram, um, Barkley, OBJ. So, again, it's all guys that have proven that they can play in the league but are not in great situations but are still very, very young. So, good to have on the roster. Not sure how often I'm going to be able to use them on a week-to-week -week basis. Jordan Matthews obviously takes a big dub from the Julian Edelman suspension. So, hopefully I'll be able to use him early on. The other big thing here is the tight end position. You only start one, but it is a 1.5 PPR rule for them. So it's a premium tight end position. You get more points for their catches. Now, I have a couple of young guys who I really like. David Njoku, um, Jonu Smith, if you watch my best like late round guys for Dynasty and Keeper Leagues, I'm so glad that this guy was already on my team. Thank God. Um, and then Vance McDonald. So him in Pittsburgh is a phenomenal athlete. If he can get the opportunity in the role, he should um, produce some dividends this year. So a couple young guys that I think have a ton of potential. So I'm happy at the tight end position. Uh, running back is where it gets a little tricky as well, because behind Fournette, we have Tariq Cohen, um, who's kind of like the gadget player there, of course. 
Then we have a lot of unknowns. James White, you know I love Corey Clement. is one of my bigger sleepers this year. But then it's like DeAndre Washington, Chris Ivory. Um, Washington's probably not even – I probably could have cut him and got an extra draft pick this year. Um, but – I'll hold on to him for now. Chris Ivory, I kind of like him as the backup to McCoy because if something happens to McCoy, you know, he's old. He um, hasn't really been injured in a while, so maybe he's due. Uh, Chris Ivory would probably take a very, very big workload in that backfield. Down to Foreman, I think he's a great, great keeper to have right now, uh, given Lamar Miller's lack of efficiency over the last few years. Kalen Balage, I, I snagged in the draft, which, again, I'll show you guys. Um, not, not super high on him, but for PPR League. So I'll, I'll show you the draft board now. It's a good team all around for me to just adopt. It's not like someone who I think uh, um, was in like last place and was like, damn, I'm not doing this anymore. I think it was just someone who didn't really want to deal with uh, Dynasty League anymore. So this is the draft board. And as you can see, Barkley obviously went number one overall. Now, again, keep in mind, guys, this is a super flex league. So you'll see quarterbacks go off early. Also, this is a full PPR league with tight end as a premium. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these picks. Barkley went first. Um, so yeah, so don't knock on any picks except for uh, Royce Freeman at number two overall. You could absolutely knock on that pick. Um, this was a team that needed a lot of help. And, um, you know, obviously you don't know the rosters as well, so it's hard to judge based off that. But um, Royce Freeman, number two overall, really, really, really took me for a surprise because, um, you know, th this is what I was saying. The rookie running backs, for, for most people, this is not a an objective ranking for 99% of the fantasy community. This guy clearly had Royce Freeman as RB2. I would probably have Royce Freeman as my RB, like, I don't know, eight in, in Dynasty or something like that. So um, interesting to me that Freeman went first and then top uh, Mayfield went third, which I'm fine with because I think he'll probably be the best pro or at least a very good pro at that. And then Lamar Jackson, which was really interesting to me because um, you obviously still have guys like Darnold. You have Rosen on the board. Um where did Josh Allen? Wow, I'm shocked that top Josh Allen went in the second round. I wouldn't even waste a pick on him, to be honest. But um, Lamar Jackson is interesting. I really like that. I, when I went into the draft, I was like, oh, I hope I can get Lamar Jackson in the second round. I was like, fucking stupid me. But Lamar Jackson is a guy who, you know, initially you're like, eh, that's risky. But what if Lamar Jackson turns out to be, um, you know, the next Cam Newton for his first five, six seasons? Do you remember how good Cam Newton was? He was like a top five fantasy quarterback, I think, in three of the first four seasons. So imagine you got that in a rookie draft um, in a two quarterback league. Like that's, I, I can't really argue the pick. Um, obviously, if it works out, you know, every strategy works as long as you pick the right player. So I had the number five pick. Um, and thinking back on it, one, I actually didn't even realize that this was a full PPR league when I was drafting. If, if I'm being completely honest with you, um, so the Michelle pick might look a little questionable, but like I've said many times this summer, I'm going to be higher on Michelle than. A lot of people in fantasy this year. Geis, um, I, it, looking back on it, I may have done things a little differently and taken Geis at five over Michelle, knowing that it was a full PPR league, because I think Geis is going to be involved in the passing game more than Michelle is, but I absolutely love the upside in this Patriots offense with Michelle this year. So I want Michelle there. Geis, Moore, Penny, Chubb, Ronald Jones, on Johnson. I actually really like, like that 8 to 10 range this year in Dynasty picks because – for the most part, in almost every league, you're getting like a choice of Rashad Penny, Ronald Jones, or Carryon Johnson falling to you down there. And I like all three of those in terms of long-term prospects. I know I shit on Ronald Jones a lot, but I, it's only because I don't believe that this is a good – like redraft is going to be a great opportunity for him this year particularly. But if he can prove that he's you know capable on third downs, Charles Sims is on a one-year contract. Next year, Ronald Jones might completely own that backfield. So I'm not like um, – I don't hate Ronald Jones as a player. I just don't particularly love his situation this year. But you're able to get one of those those nice running backs who will have a great situation next year, Nick Chubb, Carryon Johnson, who will own the backfield at the end of the draft. So uh, moving back is probably like a something that I, I that I might suggest for, for some of you guys playing in Dynasty rookie drafts. Then we had Calvin Ridley, and then the two quarterbacks went off the board. Christian Kirk and Anthony Miller would have loved to have gotten either of those two in a PPR league. And I went Cooper Cup. I have no idea what the owner of Cooper Cup was thinking. I, he cut him before the draft. I, I I don't know. I I really have no idea what like what the reason for that was. But I'll take Cup. This is his second year in the league, looking like beautiful chemistry with Jared Goff, ready to roll. So um, I had no problem taking Cup there. He's a guy that I could play immediately, not like uh, some of these other wide receivers that went a little bit after him, like Michael Gallup, Dante Pettis, 
Cortland Sutton, uh, Traquan Smith. None of those guys you know for sure are getting immediate play time, even Michael Gallup. Um, if Terrence Williams is back from his – whatever his police report was, um, there's no telling that he's going to be starting in two wide receiver sets. So snap counts for all those other wide receivers are not an immediate guarantee where Cooper Cup obviously is. So Cup, Gallup, uh, where else? We'll just kind of skip down. I, try, I tried really hard to trade into the 211 uh, spot or anywhere in that range because I wanted Cortland Sutton because he dropped so far. And Cortland Sutton is a guy who – um, it's really looking to be the replacement for Demarius Thomas next year because Thomas is going to be older. I think like 31. Uh, they don't really own any guaranteed money at the end of the season or going into next year. So they can cut him and replace him with Cortland Sutton, who they drafted in the second round this year. Same body type, same physicality, probably needs some time to develop, which is good. So we'll have this year, but next year he probably will be a pretty good, useful prospect. And then maybe in his third year, he kind of breaks out. So I wanted Sutton there, but um, I couldn't get a trade done. Chase Edmonds at the third, 305. I like that. <clears throat> and then I took Kalen Balaj here. Um, Balaj, again, is a guy I, I have no thoughts as to him taking over the workload in Miami completely. But, um, you know, all we're seeing is good reports coming out of Balaj. And I think that, oh, damn, dude, I want Jordan Wilkins really bad. I'm hoping that since we're on, you know, that was like the next thing that was on here. Jordan Wilkins is the fifth round running back out of uh, – um, it, that went to Indy, and I have two picks. Let me see, one, two, three, four uh, here. I was deciding between Jordan Wilkins and Jamon Moore at this 405 spot right here. Ended up going with Moore um, just because I think I needed more help at wide receiver than at running back for this year. So, uh, so I went with Moore there, but I'm really hoping Wilkins drops to me. Um, now we obviously have the news that Andrew Luck was throwing the football again, and he's he'll be ready for week one. So I think if you can own, obviously, the running back in an Andrew Luck offense, that's great. Um, you know, Obviously, the chances are more favored toward Marlon Mack being that guy, but Jordan Wilkins in a rookie draft in the fifth round, like that's only upside. You know what I mean? Uh, where was I? What was I going to? Oh, so Kalen Blas. Yeah, another good report coming out of Miami today with – uh, from Balazs. So I was happy to pick him up because he's, let me see, he's progressing quick, quickly. Also drew raves from his OCA work. Despite his size, Balazs has looked like Miami's best passing down back this offseason. So in a full PPR league, I was happy to take Kalen Balazs here because he can turn into someone who takes 40% of the touches and, you know, 70% of the receptions in that backfield. So um, I, I liked him there. And we don't really know. We have a small sample size of uh, Kenyon Drake, so we don't exactly know, you know, into the future how well he'll do in Miami. Then you see these other guys. I was pumped up that someone took ESB before Jamon Moore because Jamon Moore is a guy I was targeting, um, and thankfully he fell to me. Then you see a lot of these like veterans go. I, I would rather just invest in a rookie than a guy like Demarco Murray or TJ Yeldon. Like I'm really hoping Jordan Wilkins falls to me there. So um, that's the draft thus far. I, I'm happy with my four picks. I think that was nice. Michelle Cup uh, are two guys that I'll be able to use this year. Uh, Jeronimo Allison actually is not practicing in minicamp right now, so hopefully that opens up some opportunity for more. In the preseason, I'm hoping that he can win that wide receiver three role. So that's like a, a that's kind of a boomer bust pick. If he can win that wide receiver three role, I think Moore has heavy upside. But if he doesn't, then he's probably just taking up a roster spot of mine. But I was willing to take the uh, take the risk there. Um, so let's get into the mock draft. We're going to do this on Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. Um, if you want to do any cash leagues right now, um, the draft app, draft.com slash BDGE. If you use promo code BDGE, you will get a three free free. The fuck was I saying? A free three dollar entry into a money league. Um, you can use anything from a dollar up to a thousand dollars to get into a league. Really good practice now because they are you're obviously cash leagues. Um, so you're getting real ADP and you're getting real people competing for cash. But you can play for as little as a dollar, so um, you're not really wasting any money. And that is the draft app. So draft.com/bdge. You'll get a free three dollar entry if you use that promo code. But we're not doing it on there. We're doing it on Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. And this is against computers, guys, if you're unaware what this uh, actual platform is. What we're going to do is set it to Dynasty, rookies only. Uh, we'll do four rounds, I guess. Um, we're going to do a snake because they don't actually allow you to do custom unless you have, you have to set up a bunch of shit in the background. Usually the Dynasty drafts, as it was for this one, you have like the fifth the fifth pick, and that's what you have round to round. Um, but we're going to do a snake draft just for the sake of not wasting any more time trying to set this up. 12th team, uh, I'm just going to randomize it right now, so you'll see exactly whatever I get. Okay, so I have the seventh pick. We're going to start the draft. We're going to do the same settings, super flex league. Um, should I do super flex or should I do regular for you guys? 
you know, we'll do regular just because um, I think you guys are probably more interested in the skill players. So we'll do it like that. Even though I guess it doesn't matter, but so we're going to start the draft. This is half PPR, I believe. Okay, so we see the first six picks, and the picks go off, like I said, very quickly because this is against computer. This is like the expert rankings that Fantasy Pros uses. Um, uh, so, and again, like this is going to be a little different. I'm just, it's kind of just going to go by my rookie rankings because if, uh, if you're in a dynasty rookie draft, you obviously have a team set up and you're going to draft based around what your team needs, but we're just going to go with overall right now. Um, so, you see the first six picks that goes Barkley, Sony Michelle, Darius Geis, Rashad Penny, Nick Chubb, BJ Moore. I think that's a very realistic first six picks in a dynasty rookie draft for one quarterback leagues at least. When you look at what's left on the board, we're going to hide the drafted players. You can see down here. Ronald Jones, Royce Freeman, Cortland Sutton, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Carrion Johnson. And again, this is going to be highly dependent on your team and what you need. But my... My uh, inclination when it comes to dynasty rookies is I think people overlook or the people overvalue um, future production, right? And I get that wide receivers have a longer length, a longer span of like elite production if they do get there. But for the most part, I want to be drafting guys that can produce now. Um, and I don't want to bank on this is for startup leagues more so than than even rookie leagues like when you're drafting and people you know let guys like Antonio Brown fall really far they let you know Le'Veon Bell fall really far just because he's a little older I don't give me like two to three years of elite production out of Le'Veon Bell over like a, a few years of Mike Evans and you know people are pro projecting who knows where a guy like Mike Evans is going to be in five six years you know what I mean and he's so highly ranked in startups and things like that so I think one of the uh, big mistake people make in startup leagues or any kind of dynasty leagues is overvaluing what they think they know is going to happen in like three to five years down the road. So I think just just keep an eye out for that stuff when you're drafting and take advantage of people who let older players slip. Like obviously you're not going to want to go all in on like a fucking Jordy Nelson right now or use heavy, heavy draft capital on a guy like Demarius Thomas or anything like that because, you know, in, in a year or two, he might actually be completely done. So uh, just be smart about that. Right now, I had someone ask me Ronald Jones or Royce Freeman in Dynasty because I made that video where I was discussing who I wanted in redraft. Uh, I liked Royce Freeman more in redraft. However, I like Ronald Jones more in Dynasty. As I mentioned, I think Jones is the more talented back. I just don't like his uh, his his opportunity right now. I think that next year, like I said, Charles Sims is on the one-year deal. Peyton Barber might vanish into a nothing by the end of this year. Ronald Jones can prove that he can play on third downs, catch the ball. Like like I said, I don't think he's incapable of doing it. I just think he has to prove it in order for the Bucks to be like, yep, we're going to give you that role now. So if he could do that this year, then yeah, next year he could absolutely be that three down back, 18, 18 touches a game. So Ronald Jones is a guy I like. Carry on Johnson, though, man. Carry on Johnson is someone that I absolutely love. I'm actually going to pick Karen Johnson right here. And I'm only doing that because I, I don't think he's going to fall back to me um, if I don't take him now. Now, carry on Johnson. Yeah, he definitely would not have. Um, wow, I couldn't even see Brown went all the way up there. So carry on Johnson. Here's my thing with this. Uh, I, I believe in carry on Johnson as a player, as a talent. Uh, I think he's very reminiscent of Aaron Foster. Smooth, has intangibles, but has a good mix of elusiveness and power, um, quick twitch ability, things like that, and just has a good feel for the game. Very, very, very patient and able to hit holes. And that Detroit Lions offensive line should be – this is going to be the best line that they've had in years, in a long time. And I think that bodes really well for Carrion Johnson and his style of play and the fact that he is really – his vision is very good and his patience is very good. So when you give him holes, when you have a Detroit line like they do now, right, they pick Frank Ragnall um, first round. He's going to be an absolute bully in the NFL. TJ Lane, they, they, they just have a very, very, very good offensive line. I'm not sure people are really aware of that, but give um, Carrion Johnson holes and he's going to be able to hit that. And the reason I love him in Dynasty is because, you know, the redraft is a little uh, – it's a little shaky this year, right? They have Blunt. They have Theo Riddick, of course. And those guys might occupy the goal line and the uh, passing down roles. However, next year, I, I, I believe Theo Riddick is off his contract next year. Let me just pick that out. And it's possible that they extend him. Who knows? But Theo Riddick, uh, he is signed through – okay, no. So he actually is on the roster for 2019. But – 
Uh, Garrett Bowen's a one-year deal. And I, I don't even think that – I'm not even sure that Karrion Johnson won't completely overtake – uh, LeGarrette Blunt's like entire role by the end of this year, right? So I, I think for next year, Karen Johnson is going to be like the lead back in a very good offense behind a very good offensive line with a very good quarterback in Matt Stafford. There's not not much downside to carry on Johnson there. So this is more a, a futuristic pick than uh, one that I think is going to absolutely dominate and redraft this year. Um, but I really, really, really like carry on Johnson. So he was my first round pick. And then we saw – Wide receivers, running backs, tight ends go off the board. Um, too early for most of these guys for me. Hmm. Let me see what we got. We got some quarterbacks. There's not man, There's not much value at running back, wide receiver. Um, I hate, like, basically every tight end in the draft. Dallas Godard would have been a great uh, – I would have liked Godard more than uh, Kasicki had he not gone to Philadelphia because now he's just kind of – put into that Trey Burton role behind Zach Ertz. And uh, it's going to be a few years before he can do anything fantasy-wise. So that's a tough pick. Traquan Smith is a guy I really like. Dante Pettis is another guy I really like. Um, cooling on Antonio Callaway. He's already dealing with a soft tissue injury, which is not good. Um, but a lot of people like his talent. So if you if you like the upside of Antonio Callaway, uh, a lot of off-field issues, I'm probably passing on him. Running backs, Naeem Hines. Uh, you know what? Hines is a guy that, like, I – I am not really excited about taking because I, you don't see, he doesn't have that like workhorse upside. And those are the guys that I usually like to take this early in the draft, at least like I took Balaj in the third round. I know, but um, it, when I'm looking at my first and second round guys, I, I like to take running backs. Cause I think, you know, when you have young running backs, those are when their primes of their careers are right. And if you can get them early, like if you use your dynasty rookie picks, on early running backs, I think you get a lot more value out of them um, than wide receivers. And if you take some of these wide receivers like Traquan Smith or Dante Pettis um, and you take them now, they're not going to really produce for you in redraft, right? The value of wide receivers usually hits its peak around third, fourth, fifth years. Whereas running backs, you know, usually within a year or maybe two years what they're going to be giving you in fantasy, right? And that's their peak value. So you want to get them at their peak value. So just like this year in redraft, I've been saying I want to go running backs early. I'd, I'd like to do that in in, uh, in rookie drafts as well because um, their, their peak value is at a much younger age than most wide receivers are. So you can get them even if you wanted to move them throughout the offseason. Then you can move them for like a wide receiver that you think is equal to value. But there are not a lot of running backs left that I like here. I would almost look at uh, one of these quarterbacks, I think. And again, this would be completely dependent on how your team is made up. Um but I'm going to go with the left field pick and I'm going to go with Dante Pettis because Pettis is a guy that we're hearing a lot of good things coming out of camp. Pettis is a guy that the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, traded up for in the draft into the second round to grab him. Uh, we look at Pierre Garcon. He is 31 coming off basically a broken neck, right? He missed most of last season after he got hurt. He's going to be old. He's going to be losing a lot of his agility, a lot of his athleticism, which was what made him good. Um, and now they have Dante Pettis playing all all over the field. They said they're moving him um, to all different wide receiver positions. And to me, that says you want to keep him on the field as much as possible, right? So they could be using him in three wide receiver sets, two wide receiver sets even, because he'll know all of the all the route trees. And anytime you could uh, get a guy like Dante Pettis, who is coming up with, you know, one, he has Kyle Shanahan there as a head coach. Two, you have a young quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo, who's obviously going to be that quarterback for the next 5, 10, 12 years, whatever, if you can get Dante Pettis um, as a guy that, you know, if, if he's going to be useful in this offense, Goodwin, Goodwin's a guy I like as well. Um, but he's, he's sort of a one-trick pony in my opinion. Uh, but Dante Pettis for me, since he's the cheapest in redrafts, uh, see, he's learning all three receiver spots. We're throwing a lot at him, uh, just challenging him and seeing what he can grasp. His offensive player team traded up to draft in the second round. Coach Kyle Shanahan talked up Pettis' versatility and flexibility after the draft. So it's not a surprise that they're using him all over the field. So um, I'm really excited about Dante Pettis' future. And that's what made me kind of snag him here. I think I was probably deciding between Dante Pettis and Traquan Smith, because Traquan Smith is another guy who I really like down the line. Uh, it's unclear in that New Orleans offense what his role is going to be this year. But you'd have to think with Teddy Ginn getting older, uh, Cameron Meredith is unproven coming off that big injury. Uh, we have to see what he kind of does for the team.
But I think there's a lot of opening there. Um, if Traquan Smith can prove himself to be pretty good his rookie year, then next year he could be even better with Drew Brees throwing him the ball. So I went Dante Pettis because I think we'll see more immediate returns. And now we're looking at not a good grouping here. So the top four quarterbacks are off the board. So depending on your team, if those guys go, then um, you're not looking into a good situation here. Now you have Josh Allen, Mason Rudolph. Now Mason Rudolph's obviously the guy behind Ben Roethlisberger. Big Ben says he wants to play for another three years or whatever. So you'll have to live with that, knowing that Rudolph's kind of going to sit on your bench for a few years. If you're okay with that, if you're in a two-quarterback league, it might be might be worth it. I don't know. It's more so if you believe in Rudolph, um, because who knows? What if he sits for three years and then he turns out to be a bust? Then you just wasted a roster spot for a long time. So I'm not really uh, hyped up on guys that are not going to play for a while. Josh Allen, I, I just don't believe in the guy's talent. He's just a ter- really not accurate, and he was not accurate in a terrible conference. So I'm not really sure what the NFL scouts saw to say, like, okay, he wasn't good in college, so maybe he'll just be good in the NFL. Like, usually that doesn't work. So I think that's kind of a wasted draft pick. Um, who are we looking at now? I like a lot of these rookies. Like I said, Hines has, uh, you know, he could uh, he could see some good opportunity this year. His upside's not there. Mark Walton, um, I'm okay with Mark Walton. He is basically going to, when Gio's contract runs out, Mark Walton is probably, he's just going to be the next Gio in that offense. And I don't really know how valuable that is with Joe Mixon there. Jordan Wilkins, I talked about him. He's a guy that I would like to stash. I don't think I want to use my third round. Eh, maybe I'll use my third round pick on him. Josh Adams, now nah, Bo Scarborough. Chase Edmonds, a guy that I, that intrigues me a lot. Uh, super, super productive player out of Fordham. So small college, that's that's a knock on him. Uh, but they absolutely love him out in Arizona. Uh, obviously, he's behind David Johnson. But if anything happens to David Johnson, Chase Edmonds is the first guy you want to grab on the wire. Ito Smith is a guy who intrigues me because he'll take over that Tevin Coleman role once he's gone next year. Uh, in terms of wide receivers, Kiki Kuti. You know, I haven't really looked into him that much. So if you guys know about Kiki, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you know. I know he's a smaller player. He's like uh, kind of like a gadget player. And again, I, just, I don't know. I just don't see a lot of upside when they already have D-Hop there. They already have Will Fuller there. Like how much production can he really get down the line? Jamal Moore, um, I already kind of talked about him. I like him. So not a lot of great picks here. Uh, I think I, at this point I would probably go with – Naeem Hines. And I know you guys are going to ask about the Baltimore tight ends. I just want nothing to do with that, to be honest. I'm going to go with Naeem Hines. Third round, I'm okay with that because he should be uh, pretty heavily utilized. Super, super good athlete. Great pass catcher. Um, and if he could, if he can carve out that role in behind Andrew Luck, uh, you know, I, I could definitely live with that. <sighs> Who else we go? So Chase Edmonds is probably a guy that I would take right now. It's not much else on the board. I love how no one took Josh Allen. That pleases me a lot. Another guy I'm looking at is Ian Thomas. So if you are unfamiliar with Ian Thomas, he's not a guy that's going to produce for you right now. But he is behind Greg Olson. So Olson signed that two-year deal. Uh, Thomas is a guy that did – I mean, his production wasn't crazy, but – he, uh, as I say here, he's a late bloomer in college. He had a 91st percentile spark score at the combine, and he moves really well uh, for a tight end. So I think like that position overall, now Greg Olson obviously is a beast by himself, but when he's gone, I think that position offers a lot of opportunity, um, the tight end in Carolina, because we've seen how much production they've got out of Greg Olson over the last whatever years. Um, so Ian Thomas is a guy, I'm not like super, super high on him, but um, he's a guy that you should have on your radar in dynasty leagues. And then, uh, what else? Wide receivers. No one I really love here. Mm-hmm. The, the problem with like dynasty rookie drafts and wide receivers and stuff is it's so hard to predict into the future uh, opportunity. Because for the most part, right, like running backs, you're like Chase Edmonds. Okay, David Johnson. Jalen Samuels. Okay, Le'Veon Bell. You know what I mean? So the wide receivers, it's like there are three starting wide receivers plus like other randoms on the roster and stuff like that. So it's hard to kind of get a grip on which guy. It's more so like a talent thing. Like, where do you think he fits into the offense? And do you think his talent is good enough for him to get some opportunity in the first year, enough for him to give you some dynasty value? Um, But this is a point where, like, you should know going into the drafts, 
you know, who, uh, who like on Indy, like which wide receivers do they have on their roster that um, their contracts might be up or something like that, right? Like Deion, uh, Deion Kane is – actually, Deion Kane is not a guy I hate to pick at this at this late in the rookie dynasty draft because uh, Dante Moncrief is finally out of there. They have – who else do they have? They have like Chester Rogers, um, Ryan Grant, I think, right? After Ryan Grant got absolutely robbed by the Ravens. Who we can get from a Manchester Rogers? Leading candidate to be the number two role. So he'll be a, a restricted free agent 2019. He might be off the roster, and he's their number two, apparently. So um, there's obviously opportunity to be had there in that in that in the, uh, in the offense. So I, I think in a situation like this, it might come down to Deion Kane versus Darius Fountain, who you like better. Um, I think Jalen Samuels is an interesting pick. I think Chase Edmonds is a guy I would like to have here as well. Uh, but it, it's more so about doing your research on these on these later round rookie guys than um, than anything else because it's going to be hard to really tell where um, where they'll fit into the offense in in, the, in their first year. So Jalen Samuels can push. When it comes to Le'Veon Bell situation, right? He's on the tender again. Got chicken tendered. Is he going to sign a fat deal after this year? I don't know, man. The way the NFL is working, teams are just investing into rookie running backs early so they don't have to pay them later, or what it seems like at least. Uh, so Samuels is an interesting pick if you think that Le'Veon Bell will be out of there next year. Chase Edmonds is a guy that they really like. So, I, you know, I'm going to go with Chase Edmonds here just because I know if you're a David Johnson owner, I would love to pick, take uh, take Chase Edmonds. <clears throat> Sorry. Wow, they're, they're uh, advertising draft here. Um. Yeah, Chase Edmonds is a guy, if you're a David Johnson owner, I would absolutely look into grabbing, if you could. Um, so, Karen Johnson, Dante Pettis, Neem Hines, Chase Edmonds. This draft was obvi- it was much sharper than the draft that I had been in over here in my Superflex League. I got a lot more value out of those guys than I did in this one. Um, but I'm still happy with the picks I got. Carry on, Dante Pettis, Neem Hines, Chase Edmonds. Um, so, let me know what you think about the team. Let me know what your some of your favorite uh, late round rookies are. So, you know, you can get them on my radar. I don't know every single prospect that comes out of college. I'll be the first one to say that. So, um, drop that down below. Um, as always, leave a comment and a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel, we'll be coming at you with mock drafts every Friday, videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, vlog Saturday, live stream Sunday. Make sure you join me for live streams on Sunday. Hit that notification bell underneath the video so you know when I go on, boy.